वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर इंद्राणी भट्टाचार्य डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ म्यूजोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा वेस्ट बेंगल आवर सब्जेक्ट इज इंडियन कल्चर कोर्स इज म्यूजोलॉजी एंड टूडेज मॉड्यूल इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग कंजर्वेशन रेस्टोरेशन एंड प्रिजर्वेशन एंड इट्स प्रिंसिपल्स the main learning objectives of this modules are what is conservation what do you mean by preservation what is restoration this module helps a student to know about the different process of dating of antiquities it also helps someone to know about the scientific methods of analysis of the materials for conservation and it also throws light on the different conservation laboratories in india also first we should start with conservation conservation refers to the whole subject of the care and treatment of museum objects it may be movable or immovable it may be tangible or intangible museum collect objects through different modes that are field collection gifts parties exchanges treasure trove confiscation of objects mainly wildlife related objects etc museum objects are varied both according to the material and also subject wise we also see object in our museum of daily use utensils tools paintings decorative arts tribal culture objects or ethnographical objects objects of contemporary art and what not once an object enters into the museum it is the responsibility of the museum and the responsibility of the curator begins here for the proper care and conservation of that object now we come to the point what is conservation we can define conservation as all forms of direct or indirect actions aimed at increasing the life expectancy of an undamaged or an damaged object or element of cultural property we can classify the conservation into three categories number 1 is preventive conservation number 2 is curative conservation and number 3 the last one is remedial conservation which is also termed as restoration there is a proverb that is prevention is better than cure in a museum all the collected objects may be sound or stable but some may be in a damaged condition whenever may be the condition of the object preventive conservation or preservation is essential in case of each and every object preventive conservation is nothing but any type of indirect 
action taken to increase the life expectancy of any object by arresting the further damage. Now come to the point of curative conservation. In a museum or gallery, some object are in a bad state of preservation and therefore they are in need of curative conservation. Curative conservation includes all forms of direct action taken to increase the life expectancy of an object. All the chemical conservation work, electrochemical conservation work, electrolytic conservation work comes under this category. Restoration means any action taken in order to return back the object so far possible to its original physical and aesthetic state. Before starting conservation work, we should study collective approach for total safety of an object. The closer study of collection for proper care and preservation of object in a museum is needed every day. It is a misnomer to believe that objects get preserved automatically by their entry itself into a collection. Conservation of collection in a museum is a collective responsibility and everybody in a museum are involved in the care and conservation of an object. Care and protection is not only the job of the laboratory but everyone from top to the bottom of a museum are involved in it. Through such a collaborative approach any type of deterioration physical, chemical or biological could be avoided. Ignorant human hands and human behavior sometimes cause serious damage to our cultural property but by taking some fundamental precautions collections could be protected from mechanical deterioration or serious type of damage. Collective approach also includes acquisition of only the original objects in a particular museum collection, the faking and the forgery of the object during collection should be avoided which is discussed clearly in the um, next modules. Registration method should be standardized so that the conservation work could be easier, accurate and scientific. For repair methods such as use of glue tapes, adhesive tapes or any other untested material should not be used on the object for conservation work. Monitoring of various parameters of environment has to be done regularly and for the study of round-the-clock measurement of the various factors so that preventive measures could be adopted accordingly. Proper materials should be used for making display cases and proper packing and transport facilities should be adopted in a museum. 
proper management of the movement of the artifact within the museum and outside the museum is also important factor. At the time of the entry of the object, the proper condition of the object should be checked. It should be documented and at regular intervals. The condition of the object should be monitored so as to study the decaying process to understand the mechanism of decay. In some cases, this regular checking also helps us to stop any type of damage of the object. Delicate artifacts should not be on display for longer duration. Rotation of such objects in display is advisable. It is basically important for the exposure of textiles or paintings in the uh, minima for the limited period in the limited amount of light. It should save them from decay and continuous exposure to strong and harmful lighting should be avoided. Clean dust free environment and proper housekeeping in each and every case is necessary. Proper textual, graphic, photographic documentation, proper planning for conservation, Proper safety and security measures have to be done after careful consideration. The damaged object should be removed from the vast collection and mainly the objects which are in good condition should be on display. Before going to the treatment of an object, one should prepare a condition file for each and every object. And this condition file is involves and uh, recorded the main detailing of an object like material composition of the object, that is, it is organic or inorganic or composite type of object. It is made of, of iron or copper or stone, etc. The proper location and the climatic condition of the object should be recorded. It could be done digitally or manually. The dimension that is proper measurement of the object should be taken before undertaking any conservation process. If there is any special feature, the conservator in the laboratory should be noted that the damage which have already occurred in the object should be noted down. And then the conservator should try to know the probable cause of damage. And the next point is to find out the extent of damage. The above information are recorded meticulously on the condition file with a set of photographs also. And before treatment, a photograph should be taken and it should be pasted in the condition file. After removing the object to the conservation laboratory, some more information are to be added to it. These are any treatment done before that particular treatment. The suggested treatment which has to be done in the next phase. The actual treatment procedure 
chemical which is used during the conservation process and if any conservator prepare any type of solution or something he should note down the procedure of that preparation in exact manner the instrument tools or equipment which are used in the conservation procedure should be noted down the time taken for treatment is also necessary and at last the condition after the treatment of the object should be noted down with the photograph of the object after treatment at last the conservator should note down if there is some remarks or some special points for the future reference work all the information are recorded meticulously with a set of photograph in each and every step and detailed documentation in a conservation laboratory is a vital part during any type of conservation or preservation or restoration work because it will help the other professional to work on this object in future when we discuss about the conservation of materials in a museum or the conservation of structural monuments archaeological structures etc we should know in brief the composition of the object a museum may possess different type of objects that may be organic inorganic or may be composite such as metal stone clay object paper manuscript palm leaf manuscript textiles textiles may be are of different types cotton textile linen silk woolen garments etc thanka bidri works wooden objects basketry after being a part of a museum the objects can be exposed to various phenomena that cause deterioration these phenomena are climate lighting humidity insect fungus mildewing negligence mishandling ignorance etc which will be discussed in an analytical way in the next modules now before starting any conservation work we have to study the scientific analysis of the materials now it is there are several methods which are used for the scientific analysis of museum material materials in the laboratory one can detect the material composition of museum objects the damaging causes the extent of damage of the object which will help the conservator in selecting the treatment or to take remedial measures with the introduction of new technology chromatography spectrometry x-ray analysis and some other macro and micro clinical apparatus have made the job much easier accurate and scientific in laboratories in india nowadays we have seen atomic absorption spectrometry x-ray fluorescence atomic absorption spectrometry requires only a small sample removed from the object for the 
examination. This sample must be very small, typically about 100 opigram, collected from an inconspicuous area of the object. The X-ray fluorescence or XRF helps non-metals such as ceramics or glass for analysis. The non-destructive method of analysis of the material is preferred in conservation work. Emission spectrometry in this type of spectrometry, the spectrum emitted by the elements in the visual or ultraviolet wavelength and either be recorded on a photographic plate or electronically. The method is extremely sensitive for most elements and can give simultaneous analysis for up to 40 elements. How Ever, due to inherent instability in the this type of method, sufficient precision for quantitative measurement for major elements are also necessary. The problems of emission spectrometry have now been resolved by inductively coupled plasma spectrometry or ICPS. However, Emission spectrometry is still useful for the detection and qualification of stress element and as such was once the method employed for many of the three major analytical third studies on antiquities. Inductively coupled plasma spectrometry is also a recently used analytical technique in conservation. Here a solution must be prepared as samples taken from object typically 50 gram only 50 gram of the temp sample is needed. Spectrometers are very expensive and in all cases it is not possible to use spectrometry for the analysis of material of an object. Here are some photographs, some pointed out the original damage of a textile object which requires some conservation. The other pointed out and helps in the development of the photographs taken before and after the treatment, conservative treatment and in the last one, in the bottom one, we can see the samples which are used for analysis. The next important point when we discuss about conservation is the dating of antiquities. Dating can be done by various ways. The most often we use carbon dating method. It is widely used by archaeologists. Statigraphy method used from the very earliest time is more or less easy and it is also now used for dating of the antiquities. The other types of dating of antiquities includes amino acid method, thermal luminescence method, dendrochronology study, Archaeomagnetism, other methods are also available for dating of the antiquities before we going for the 
conservation and preservation of our cultural property. Before starting any conservation work, we should be very strict about the ethics of conservation. Any object when comes to a laboratory for conservation work, it should be handled with care. Large object should not be dragged. Trolley or fork lifts may be used for indoor transportation. Small object may be carried on cast out rocks, racks. Object should not be touched with bare hands because the oil or greasy matter in the hands will spoil the object. Rather, a silicon rubber gloves may be used. Proper fastener should be used while mounting. Proper and neutral packing material should be used while packaging. Packing is an, a, another important area for safety of the object. For analysis, though we have mentioned several methods, but preferably non-destructive method should be followed. If absolutely necessary, samples may be collected as small as possible from an inconspicuous place. Unless warranted chemical should not be used. Conservation process must always be reversible because in future any conservator suggest any better method for the conservation of a particular object, he could reverse it. And in that cases, condition file will help him or her in that way. Detailed documentation should be maintained at every step of conservation or preservation of object. At last, we should note down that conservation is a teamwork. Cooperation between the conservators, the archaeologist, biologist, artist in an absolute must. Human remains must be respected. Health concern for the staff dealing with conservation is very important because here chemical involvement is more or ne less necessary. So, health safety is of utmost importance. Toxic and inflammable and corrosive chemical should be handled with proper care. Conservator should be aware of the legal provision regarding the heritage and antiquities before doing a restoration work, she should be completely know about the rules and regulation which is prevailed in the national and international level. And restoration of any building, monuments, heritage sites, etc. should be done in accordance to international convention. Curator in charge of the collection should not be bypassed. Above all, passion to the job is of paramount necessity. At the end, one should note down that conservation includes both preservation and restoration. And conservation is not a costly preposition. Conservation does not always need sophisticated equipment. In our India, ten traditional conservation methods are used and some of these are also very important 
and very valuable in the present day also. In this type of conservation, we can also avoid the use of chemicals. Nowadays, the, the different laboratories in India like National Research Laboratory for the Conservation of Cultural Property, Lucknow, Intech, National Museum Conservation Laboratory, etc. and other laboratories in some Indian museum, they, are, they also work on and researches on different aspects of the use of traditional conservation method. During cons conservation work, Ethical consideration must be respected. And at last, I should say that a skilled conservator always combines commonly available resources with intelligence, innovation, and common sense. And the references which are given at the end of the model will help anyone to reach their knowledge about this subject. The wavelengths also help the student to enrich their knowledge about the topic and the MCQ will help them to prepare for their study on this particular topic. Thank you.